plant a church like a gardener and not an architect? This is the answer that I've been giving, uh, especially in these last few weeks and months to people when they ask, uh, how do you even plant a church or how are you going to plant a church? Um, uh, th th there's a lot of different things that I've seen and I've studied over the last uh, 10 years of preparing for what we're preparing, what we're launching into now. Um, I'm not saying that that what I have to say is the right way or or it's genius, but this is just my take on it. Um, a lot of what I've seen and kind of this, sorry, but it's kind of a pop culture that's developed in church world around church planting, where it's the cool thing to do, or you really haven't arrived until you've planted a church, all of that kind of stuff. Um, if you can't tell the disdain on my face, I'm not a big fan of that kind of uh, uh, atmosphere around church planting, but churches being planted and people are doing great jobs. And, and, um, I, I, what can I, what do I have to say about any of that? But the, 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 I think most of it's been approached like an architect. And here's what I mean. An architect has a vision for a building. She sees it in front of her, but when she closes her eyes, she can envision it. And then she sets out to draw it out or sketch it out the, from the foundation up and, 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 or, and where, how big the foundation has to be and where these walls are going to go, how high they're going to be and, and how are they going to connect to each other and which way the doors have to swing and where does the, where does the piping need to go? All all of the details she starts with the end in mind and and then then she makes this plan and then when they build they build according to the plan where every from 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 preparing the ground for the foundation to laying the foundation everything is is set in place with the goal in mind and and the uh, the plan is to reach that goal and i've seen most church planting most of the church planting that i've seen um not all i've been a part of some really great church plants um, uh, personally, but um, the, most of what I've seen in just in the in the, the, the in the world when it comes to church planting approaches it like an architect. Um, people say, um, you know, I, I want in so many years I want to have this many people on a Sunday morning. We want to have this kind of kids ministry and this kind of small group ministry and this kind of worship team and, and, and all these benchmarks of reaching it. And then that's why the question comes from where's your what's your three five year plan? How are you going to achieve that vision of yours? There was always something that, that just that excites me about. I'll be honest, something about that excites me about because I'm I think naturally I think in steps and strategy and and trying to connect things and, and and make them all happen. But something just felt wrong, and I would see it over and over again. But it just I didn't really understand what it was. And then I'm talking to somebody recently, and just kind of clicked that when and with the church when we're planting the church notice that we do use the term planting and not building or 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 designing but we we talk about church planting which i think is the right way to talk about it um but we when we're when we're planting a church um if we're if we're thinking if we're approaching it from an architect's perspective here's the danger that that it happens all the time and, and everywhere i think um then everything is about reaching that. Then the people that come in are about reaching that. Then, then people somewhere along the way become a means of reaching my, that goal that I have. It doesn't become about the people primarily. Um, it becomes primarily about that vision. And if we're approaching it like an architect, that's the way it should be. We should be thinking about the end in mind. But I, there's just something that's always felt wrong about about that to me and let me explain and that's that's why i've i've, I've started uh, sh i've shifted completely now to the idea of a guard uh, gardening um had a neighbor our first year in the netherlands uh we've been here five years now so my all of my framework has been shaped by uh by by these last five years our first neighbor uh, at our first house in the netherlands owned his own nursery i'm not necessarily a a green thumb kind of guy it's maybe uh, somewhere down in my history beat my last name being green maybe that was there somewhere but that's not me um uh but i can handle my own and uh my neighbor he would give me tips of taking care of things in the backyard and and then uh it just i saw his garden and the guy had grapes and 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 all kinds of fruit he even had a banana tree like this is the netherlands he had a banana tree that he brought back i think from israel i mean it was just beautiful so i was really inspired so i decided to plant 
an apple tree. And I wasn't just going to start with one apple tree. I was going to start with three apple trees. It was going to be amazing. And and so I bought these three apple trees. Um, the, you know, the, the, the main branch was only about yeah, that thick wasn't really, it was tall, about as tall as I am, but wasn't really, it was still a young tree. And uh, and he helped me plant them against the fence. And then, then he explained it to me, how um, if, if you plant it there, then as the branches grow out from the main branch, then you're able to see how they're growing and kind of lash them to the fence so that in the end you've got these branches spread out. Um, across different levels of the, of the of the fence, and then when the fruit grows, it has lots of room to grow. It, they all get the right amount of sun, um, the, the, an even amount of rain, and you're able to see how the branches are growing. And then when another branch grows out, then you're able to take that and you're able to lash that. You're saying, no, that one needs to be free a little bit longer. So he taught me how to do this, and I had this vision in my head of that fence covered with apples. Um, and, and just that, just this beautiful, fruitful uh, fence, as it were. Um, and then uh, one day it just clicked. Isn't that just like how the kingdom grows? Um, I, I see the gospel as as a seed. And I think Jesus. I know Jesus talked about that the seed being planted in the soil and different kind of soils, different kind of grounds. But I think the gospel is a seed that is planted in the hearts and the spirits of. Of men and women and we can nurture that seed we can remove the obstacles away from people understanding the gospel and coming into closer relationship with jesus we can do all of those things nurture it make sure it's in a good environment all of those things but in the end the spirit is the one causing the seed to grow god builds his church and that's where it all that's where it all starts that, that all of my great plans and, and my steps for my three and five year and 10 year and 20 year plan, all of those things are great, but they kind of miss the point that it's it's not about where I'm going. It's about where I'm at today and and how, and yes, I have a, 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 a big picture, but I want to see how the thing grows, like how it grows is the exciting thing. Where the branches are going to sprout out from next, that's the exciting thing. Where's the fruit going to come from? That makes it, that, that makes it, I don't know, it makes it, it just makes it more exciting, more adventurous. So I'm planting, I'm planting a church and bringing people together and I start seeing um, relationships develop. People are meeting people and they seem to have a click and then trying to see, well, what if we, what if you guys did something? What if you, I don't know, what, 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 what gets you? frustrated what gets you excited what do you what's something you guys could jump into what's something you're passionate about or i see someone over here who seems to have a real gift for connecting with people that are really on the fringes of society well how can i facilitate that it's like the branch is growing and watching how they grow and giving structure to it as it grows organically as it grows on its own and so i've come to to understand church planting and more uh, as the work of a gardener than as an architect. And seeing the thing grow and having a keen eye for how the spirit's moving and a soft heart and, and, and loving people, but loving the process. Loving the process so much that that once once that fence is covered with fruit once once this once this village has a a a a a a, 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 a really a, just a, a live um a, a church in its midst um then then i'm thinking about how how do we where's the next thing because the process is so beautiful because because God is building his church and, and he's he's calling people and he's planting the gospel and he's watching it grow and we're removing weeds and, and, and giving structure and help people helping people understand what is the, that the Lord has put in them. Um, every seed has the potential for a forest. Uh, and I just I think that's so awesome. That's so exciting and I would really, I, I would love it if if more people would talk about church planting that way. Um, um, I'm just here at the beginning of it and getting a taste of that. And it's, I'm not, I don't have a romantic view uh, of this all. I know that uh, so many things happen at any given moment. The dynamic between people, the, uh, the things that happen, good and bad. The, there's so many different um, factors that play into it. I understand all of that, but that's kind of what makes it all so exciting. So I'd love it if more people talked about the 
church planting from that perspective. Um, I, I'd love it if we would stop using using um, the metrics that we do to be able to judge the success of a church plant. Um, I want to look someone in the eyes and I want them, I, I, I want to see them, I want to see in their eyes that, that kind of, that excitement for, man, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know where we're going to be at in three years. I know what we have today and I see some possibilities and we're just, we're kind of going to play it by ear. Um, sure, we're, we, we, wanna, we, we want to reach something, but our, our vision needs to be as big as the village or the city itself. Um, and and the, 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 the mm, Dutch word in my head, um, how, how that takes shape, that's the exciting part. That's the part where, where we get our hands dirty. It's not the, um, yeah, it's not as polished maybe, and it's not as, um, a, a, as concrete, no pun intended, as the uh, as an architect style plan, but um, I just think, especially in times like ours, that that's the best way to go to. So anyway, um, that's my um, that's my two cents.